Hey everybody, Colton Marine here. All right, so we're back with our pinwheel dog head quilt. And remember, we, we based it already. Okay, we had our pins in. I got a little ahead of you just a little bit. Okay, so some of you might not notice that some of the some of the pins are gone because I got ahead of you a little bit. But I need to, to tell you what stitching in the ditch is. So stitching in the ditch. All right, look at this. Laser, laser. It's great when you can use a, a, a tool from your garage in your quilt room. Man stuff. I like that. Man stuff. Man stuff. All right. Oh, let me get back. All right. So ditch. This is the ditch right here. Whenever you put two fabrics together and you stitch them together, that's the ditch. Look at the laser. Laser. Laser's right in the ditch. That's where you're going to put a seam. You're going to stitch right along that line right there where my laser is. Look at that. Okay, and then oh, and and that's all it is. We're gonna do a stitch in a ditch on this line, a stitch in a ditch on this line. Okay, and then the other way. All right. So when so when we turn this over, you'll see a bunch of squares cut. All right, that's quilting. All right, it'll be a quilted, it'll be quilted. All right, the act of quilting. So I'm not confident enough in my free motion. We'll do a free motion together. And it'll be pretty hilarious because the last time I did one, I wanted to light that thing on fire. Okay, but let's move on. I digress. Is that what they say? All right. All right. So we are machine quilters. So with our machines, we have a limited amount of space to work with because of the throat size. All right. Remember, throat size is this right here. This is the throat size. All right. That's a limited amount of space we have in there. So... When I make my giant quilts, yeah, you, I'm in here struggling, struggling. And that's where that uh, Juki 9010Q would be really nice because the throat on that thing is huge. All right. I'm not, I, I'm not sponsored by Juki in any way, although I wouldn't mind being sponsored by Juki. But, that, you know, machines like that with big giant throats are really great to work with. When you make quilts that I make that are huge, I like to make them big for like beds and for people to throw around and stuff. All right, so, all right, so let's go on. So now in order for me to get that, my quilt in there to work with and for me not to be hampered by, you know, the quilt uh, getting stuck in the throat and, and knocking me off my chair and stuff, we roll our quilt up, okay? So, all you're going to do is, remember, wrinkles are the enemy, you know? Get a nice little fold there. This is what I do, okay? You can do it any way you want to. And I'm sure there's some great creative ways out there to roll it, all right? But I've only been doing this for two years, so this is the way I taught myself. All right, so I just roll it, okay? And that's all it is, all right? It's not rocket science. You just roll it up so that this portion right here fits in the throat of the machine so I can maneuver around and get my stitch on without being harassed by the, the quilt hanging off or pulling it or tugging away from me. Okay? So we're just going to move this thing. Let me turn off my laser. And then um, we shall start stitching in the ditch. All right, so we're all around our machine. We got a little roll inside the throat, all right? We got some space in there, all right? There's been times where I roll this, I, I roll up some quilts and it's like, it's all full in here and it's knocking my pressure foot lever all around, but this is a small quilt, okay? Now, the great creators at sewing machine companies have thought about us machine quilters, all right? When you pick a low loft um, batting like this, you know, you can manage getting a, getting everything underneath while your pressure foot's up. But sometimes when you pick a high loft, and there's some high loft stuff out there, meaning super thick, all right, thicker than pancakes, you gotta you need some room. And they thought about us, and they gave us an extra maybe half an inch of lift, okay? So your pressure foot, uh, your pressure foot lever doesn't just go down and come up. You also got some lift, all right? There's lift in there, okay? So, when you have a high loft and you're getting tang tangled up inside your, your, uh, your, your foot, no matter, you know, if it's a free motion quilt, a free motion foot or, you know, your walking foot, all right, 
and you're getting tangled up, remember, lift up a little bit. It'll give you just enough to get up underneath there, okay? Now, another thing. On a big quilt, when I'm like huge quilts, I usually start my stitch in the middle, all right? I'll start in the middle, and then I'll work my way down, and then when I flip the quilt around, the opposite way, I'll refine that middle seam and then go the other way. But this is a pretty small quilt, so I'm just gonna go from end to end on this quilt, okay? So what I'll do is, you know, I'll come up to the top, find my center here, now, I'm going to move this pin out because I know I'm going to have enough tension once I set my presser foot down. All right, make sure that I'm nice and smooth underneath. All right, of this nice, soft, fluffy, fluff, softy, soft stuff that I like. Flannel. Yeah, flannel. It, I call it the fluffy, fluff, softy, soft. I love it. All right, down it goes. Okay, so we're set. All right, press, I mean, our walking foot. Remember, the walking foot's for straight line. Stitching, okay? You don't want to try to free motion quilt with a walking foot, all right? Remember, the walking foot's going to be grabbing from the top as your feed dogs on the bottom grab at the same time, all right? Now, I, here we go. So we're going to just go ahead and start our stitch here. All right, I'm going to back stitch just a couple. Okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and take it nice and slow. came out of the ditch right there see we can see the black on white right there that's it we come out the ditch that's what you see that to go slow i'm going fast because i want to show what it looks like when you come out of the ditch it's obvious but you know it's a creation you know it is what it is Take your time, okay? Don't rush through this, all right? You'll start getting puckers, and the puckers are those wrinkles that you stitch over. And they look crazy, but, you know, sometimes it happens. It's 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 in quilting. It's in the learning curve, okay? I, I, I remember my first few quilts. I thought that was part of the quilt, all right? Those speed bump puckers I used to get, all right? Just take your time. Get a nice, good spread on your material here, all right? They make gloves that adhere to the fabric and get a good pull, all right? That's where I draw the line, all right? I'm, I'm already in my own quilting room, but I draw the line at wearing the gloves. The gloves are just out of control for me. So I just try to use my man-sized hands to get a man-sized grip on my material, and then I just take my time. All right, so now look, so you see, now we're coming into a space here where this this ditch is not aligned with that ditch. So I do a little bit of cheating, okay? So what I'll do is, I'll bring it to the edge here. All right, and then I'll just kind of pull a little bit as I stitch, and now I'm lined up. Now I'm using a black thread, so if I drift, I'd rather drift to the black, to the dark side, to the dark fabric, so that you know, when I drift over, that dark thread will, will, will be on the darker side. It's kind of obvious when you drift with dark thread to a light side, you'll see the stitch line then, okay? Take your time. So I'm trying out this new thing that I have on top of my 
on my surface here to help help you know fabric move around because you know this softy soft fluffy fluff that I use you know it doesn't ride really smoothly on plastic on the plastic of you know my quilt table here so I got this thing where I'm gonna, I've got oh it's called um it's called the the queen size supreme slider all right I got it off Amazon all right, let's not tell the wife because she calls me the Amazon King. All right, we don't want her to know that I was on Amazon recently. And I put it on, on my surface here. All right, and the queen size just refers to the size of the deck that I have, okay? You'll have to know what size you have to before you order. They come in, I think, king size, queen size, and I don't know, they're weird sizes. But anyway, I put this thing on, and, and it's really nice. It helps my softy, soft, fluffy fluff move around. And I, you know, it's more manageable that way. Okay. Okay. So I, I kind of cheated a little bit. So I have a stitch line already here. So I'm at the end of this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm at the end. I'm going to back stitch. Okay. Lift up my pressure foot. All right. And then I'm just going to pull this thing on. I don't know how you hear here. gonna cut that and see how that see how this thing kind of like roll up I'm still getting used to it okay so all right, all right I'm still getting used to this this is I see this is gonna be a pain already but it is what it is I'm still learning I'm not an expert I just love to do it but it does help because I use this surface right here and my softy soft fluffy fluff doesn't like to ride on this. So I got this to help me out. And it helps. All right. So when you get it, if you get it, remember, fabric and thread is way more important than these extra accessory things. Okay. It just slides on. All right. You center it by putting the whole of, the, of this slider over your stitch, over where the needle goes there. And it has like this kind of like magnet. I don't know, it sticks. So I, I think I just need to put a piece of, um, I think I just need to put a piece of um, scotch tape right here so that when I'm moving my fabric, it doesn't roll up like that, okay? But hey, that's that's what we do. Guys, we uh, we, we adapt, we adjust, we overcome. So I'm gonna get some, some, some tape, put a little bead of tape right here, and then my softy, soft, fluffy fluff will ride across it. But you get the point. We got our stitch line in, all right? See that? Look at this right here. Here we go. See that? That's a pucker right there. And, hey, you get those. You know, I still get them. I'm not, hey, it happens. <laughs> I wish I could sell you perfection, but who is, okay? I don't, I don't, I don't submit my quilts to competitions. I give them to family, friends, people I love, and it's part of the game, you know? Hopefully somebody out there has some advice for these couple of puckers that I get, but it is what it is. They don't offend me at all. I'm still a quilter, all right? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Remember, it's only fabric and it's only thread, and wrinkles are the enemy.